Hola, ¿qué más? Bienvenido nuevamente a Brújula Urbana, les saluda María Camila Henao. Muchísimas gracias por estar conectados con nuestro programa, les cuento. Tenemos un invitado supremamente especial que nos va a estar contando acerca del de recorrido que ha tenido eh, en diferentes áreas artísticas. Él es Robert Thorne III, eh, nos va a estar hablando eh, sobre su recorrido musical, su recorrido por restaurantes, bares, su actual inversión en la escritura. Eh, en el cine. Entonces, Rob Rose, hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> eh, nos dice que se encuentra muy bien, acabo de saludarle. Eh, so, let's start about this. You can do, you can tell us about a brief submit about your career? Yeah, no problem. So, uh, I started out as a child model. My mother, uh, We were in Lexington, North Carolina when I was two years old and she ended up getting a job for the Department of Defense Schools as a school teacher. And as a school teacher, and she still wanted to be in the entertainment industry for modeling herself and singing. So being her child, I also followed in those footsteps and she placed me into modeling. So everything with me started modeling for her. Hanes and Oshkosh, very popular brands of children's clothing. Um, I was the first um, melaninated child to be with this agency. So everybody else was a gringo. Gringos are Blanca Americanas. Okay. I, I'm a negro, no gringo. <laughs> so, no, but I was one of the first ones um, in this particular company. And I made a lot of good money as a child model. She moved us to Japan and there, We ended up, um, you know, still doing the modeling, acting came about, and, you know, she was still doing her singing. She got a deal with Sony Records, uh, working with uh, Jet Sonic Productions, and through that, there was an um, animated cartoon series, and she was doing the voiceovers and things for that. So, I just grew up being with a parent that always was doing shows, always was in the studio, always is working in entertainment, plus being a school teacher. So my whole life uh, initially was full scale entertainment, but business and art. So yeah, that was the kind of beginning of it. Okay, thank you. Nos cuenta Rob que sus inicios comenzaron desde muy pequeño. Eh, dentro de su núcleo familiar hubo artistas, por ejemplo, su madre era modelo. Entonces él siempre estuvo rodeado como de este ambiente, entre cámaras, entre estudios, y fue lo que lo inspiró, por ejemplo, a participar en series. Nos contaba también que fue la primera persona afrodescendiente eh, en aparecer como figurante eh, en diferentes producciones, eh, en televisión, por ejemplo, y en cine. Nos cuenta que estuvo en Japón haciendo también algunos convenios con diferentes artistas, con diferentes compañías, con diferentes discográficas. Entonces, realmente su recorrido ha sido bastante amplio y comenzó desde muy pequeño. Esto era lo que nos comentaba entonces. Vamos a continuar con la siguiente pregunta y es... So, why Medellín? You come here to Medellín. And what are you coming to do here? So I've, I've been in Medellin, this is about to be four years now. Um, originally, my brother Joseph Stewart and I were looking at a place to go celebrate our birthdays. This was 2018. And we were looking at Dominican Republic, and I was like, I don't know. And then Colombia just came out of nowhere. I believe the, it was more of a universal connection. So something in the universe was like really screaming out Colombia. Uh, so following that, We turned around and we came to Medellin, but on arrival from Rio Negro, we went to Guadalupe. And the experience in Guadalupe was very tranquil and very spiritual, the connection. And so coming down into the crater in Medellin, it was just like, there's something really special about this particular place. And I don't want to leave, I want to stay here. <laughs> but by staying here, it was also the goal of expansion, expansion for business, Um, and everything else. So we formulated Azul International. Um, and with Azul International, we started developing our other companies, Vibes, which is a rooftop bar in Park and Jarris, Rob okay. Rose VIP, uh, Core 94, Medellin, which is an online bilingual radio, uh, Kira's Cafe, which I named after my daughter. Um, and then obviously the Rob Rose brand, and you know, the brand for Rob Rose's women's clothing. Uh, the main thing is not just about money, it's about being a part of the community. It's about, um, you know, loving and appreciating the culture 
and being engulfed inside of it as well. So it's not only coming on business, it's coming to live, love, support, and grow. Ok, thank you. Nos cuenta Rob que no son solamente negocios por los que viene a Colombia. A él le interesa más el ámbito cultural que ha encontrado acá en la ciudad de Medellín. En Colombia en general eh, le gusta mucho crear en comunidad, acercarse a las personas, ver qué es lo que tienen por contar, qué es lo que tiene por decir. Es como aquella frase que nos dice que todos tenemos una voz, entonces es cómo usarla, cómo expresarla. Eh, nos cuenta que está acá desde el 2018 que tiene una conexión espiritual muy fuerte, para él es muy importante siempre estar conectado con, con la esencia divina que cada ser tiene. También nos contaba que tiene bares en el Lleras, entonces vamos a profundizar un poco más acerca de esto y cómo es que cambia del ámbito artístico allá el campo un poco de los negocios, dónde quedan ubicados estos bares, por ejemplo, para que vayan y los visiten, delicioso ir a tomar algo para refrescarse por allá. Entonces, eh, Rob, you have two bars in the Jeras. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about this. So, um, it, it was kind of like a funny story how Vibes came about. Um, ended up seeing that an epic hotel in Park and Jeras, the terrace was available. So, uh, a company by the name of Casico, uh, they had the property and um, had to really just kind of push to uh, fight for. It was like 150 different people that were trying to get the terrace. So obviously my paperwork was good, my vision was good, and my presentation was awesome. So uh, we ended up being able to create Vibes. Vibes is a meshing of what we would call crossover. You have a hip hop element, you have um, you know techno, you have house music, you have funk, you have reggaeton, salsa, but you know, just all kinds of different genres of music that are represented there but it, it really represents the culture of hip-hop in the sense of the, the elements that I put inside of the place with certain photos and just the overall vibration, but I believe it speaks to the millennium age, and that's why we have such a great response of people coming out supporting vibes. And the, um, Rob Rose VIP is very new. Uh, we just reopened yesterday, my partner Rory and I. Okay. And um, that place is like the new cool for influencers okay. so like if you ever want to like run across the influencer you'll probably catch him at rob rose vip it's located in park and jarris um the thing about all the other different projects um with my bars being on in zona rose it's helped lead and kind of like motivate me to work on my new album which is zona rose so rob rose presents zona rose which i have records and things featuring you know from wire and castro to uh Dame and high to uh soy mackie different people i'm going to be working with on that project it'll probably be next year but yeah so those are both the bars so you have vibes and then you have rob rose vip okay that's very nice nos cuenta Rob que estos eh, dos bares están ubicados en el Lleras, en el poblado específicamente. Uno de ellos se llama Vibes y tiene como un aura, un ambiente de hip hop, techno, house, funk y reggaetón. Entonces, eh, esos son los ritmos que suenan allá. Eh, Rob ha estado incursionando, bueno, a su carrera involucra también estos ritmos, él ha trabajado con diferentes artistas que se enfocan en estos ritmos y también su trabajo en Medellín se enfoca en, como un cazador de talento, ¿sí? Entonces por eso estos ritmos son los que contienen vibes como bar, porque son los que representan la cultura. El otro bar se llama Rob Rose VIP, que es más enfocado en su carrera como artista. Entonces nos hablaba, por ejemplo, del de nuevo álbum, que es el disco de oro, del cual nos va a hablar un poquito más ahorita. Y allí es donde las personas pueden ir como no tan enfocadas en los géneros que hablábamos de vibes, sino en otros ritmos, más enfocados en los que él ha experimentado como artista, porque Rob también es cantante. Listo. Entonces vamos a continuar... Okay, so you talk about your album. Yes, is this? No, no, no. These are actually uh, different projects that I've worked on. Um, I sold over 10 million uh, records in my career. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I was not able to bring all of my plaques here. I have like 30, <laughs> 40 plaques. So it's about a couple. Um, <laughs> just to show and, you know, kind of tell little quick stories about them. Um, 
And I think maybe it's better we just start with one and you can translate and then we do one by one, yes. probably easier. Yes. So, um, But I, please, give me a minute. Go ahead. Vamos a hablar entonces sobre los álbumes que tenemos acá en el estudio. Él nos va a hacer como un recorrido pequeño eh, y nos va a ir contando la historia. Él nos va a ir respondiendo en inglés y yo les voy a ir haciendo la traducción. So, right now. Okay, so, um, at Trinity Factory, which is uh, at that time under Atlantic Records, uh, we work with Flow Rider on a 99% written work uh, entitled Cake. Uh, this particular uh, project It was performed at uh, Ryan Seacrest. It was performed at the um, Oscars. And it was a great record. And uh, 500,000 sold in its first eight months. Mm -hmm. And I believe by next year, it'll be at a million sold. And the popular, more popular artist is Flo Rider. And then the artist who wrote the record um, and performed also on the record that we manage at Trinity Factory is 99%. Ok, thank you. Um, nos cuenta Rob que esto no son todos los discos ni todos los reconocimientos que tiene, que en realidad han sido muchísimos, pero no cabrían en el estudio, son más de 34. Sobre 99%, eh, nos dice que fueron ocho meses aproximadamente los que fueron reconocidos eh, y e involucran artistas populares. So, we're gonna to say which of these is the most important for you? Okay, so I kind of have, these three are kind of the most important, but I can be fast about why. Okay. All right, so on your far side where it says the dirty heads, yes. um, I was working with a company called Executive Music Group under Universal Records. And uh, EMG, I ran the urban department, uh, we received this particular plaque for 500,000 sold. We were number one for 18 weeks on Billboard, first wow. time ever in history, because as an indie major, um, that had never been done uh, with this particular genre of music. That music is reggae rock. Okay. So that was a different genre, more, more or less alternative, but, so that's the first one, so you can translate. Okay, that. thank you. Le pregunté a Rob, ¿Cuáles de estos discos que nos trae el estudio son los más importantes? Se dice que estos tres son justamente los, los más importantes y los más representativos. Nos hablaba de este, por ejemplo, de Dirty Heads. Nos cuenta que fue un disco que trabajó géneros como reggae y rock, géneros muy diferentes, y que estuvo en la lista de los billboards eh, en los primeros puestos durante mucho tiempo. Entonces, que esto fue como muy diferente y muy impactante porque no esperaban que con estos géneros se dieran estos resultados. Eh, entonces para finalizar vamos a hablar del libro Rob también está eh, explorando lo que es la escritura entonces vamos a hablar de eso so Rob talk about your book tell us no excuses uh, no, no excuses. excuses will come out in Spanish in February uh, next year and basically the book goes over my whole life from a child to Medellin and then we have a Medellin book Uh, that have come behind, uh, no excuses. Um, basically, this goes into all details about my life, all personal things. Nothing has been just given to me. Um, I've been through a lot of good things, bad things. <laughs> It's a whole movie, and uh, I think people will uh, enjoy it. Uh, I believe people will get motivation from it, be inspired from it. That's the goal. And Hopefully they take from the title of no excuses. There's nothing that you cannot do. And if you create an excuse of why you can't do something, then that book and the journey that I've been through in my life should be an example of why you should feel like there is no excuse to anything and you can do anything and you can manifest anything. Okay, that's very powerful. Nos cuenta Rob que su libro se llama Sin Excusas. No excuses. Uh, so... Eh, entonces nos cuenta que es la historia de que era un niño, básicamente lo que ha sido su trayectoria en Medellín, detalles acerca de su vida, nos dice que cosas buenas y cosas malas como generalmente nos sucede a todos los seres humanos y que es toda una película, entonces promete contar confidencialidades y cuáles son esos métodos que muchas veces la mente nos dice con excusas para no hacer las cosas, por eso precisamente adquiere este nombre, sin excusas, para impulsarnos a sobrellevar todos esos miedos, a... No dejar que nos paralicen, sino todo lo contrario, continuar a pesar de que ahí estén. Para finalizar, vamos a preguntarle a Rob dónde, los pode, dónde lo podemos encontrar, sus páginas en Instagram, Facebook, bueno, todas las redes que pueda tener. So, Rob, 
eh, tus redes, ¿cuáles son? Bueno, well, you're talking about uh, where you can find me on social media. Uh, official Rob Rose underscore. And um, we have the YouTube being launched in about two weeks, and that'll be Rob Rose on YouTube. And the cool thing that we're doing with the YouTube, it's not a normal YouTube. It's more of a network TV vibe where we have different series of different concepts from me going to different uh, upscale Airbnbs and talking and promoting those for here the people here in Medellin, hotels as well, restaurants, more like Anthony Bourdain a little bit. Um, and then obviously music and things of that nature. So it's going to be like a big mix of different content. Okay, thank you. En Facebook, en Instagram, perdón, no pueden encontrar como oficial Rob Rose, guión bajo, eh, nos contaba que tiene en las redes enfoques diferentes. Por ejemplo, acá en Medellín, entonces nos cuenta sobre sus alianzas, sobre sus lanzamientos, por ejemplo, los bares, va a estar publicando acerca de su libro. Eh, entonces, nada. Thank you for accepting our invitation, Rob. Oh, no, I appreciate you for having me. <risa> Muchas gracias a ustedes una vez más por sintonizarnos. Ya saben, conectadísimos con las redes de Rob, con su trabajo, su trayectoria. Y nos vemos en una próxima ocasión en Brújula Urbana. Hasta luego.